in your function, I can compare rates of change. You guys did a lot of rates of change last year, and I can write a linear equation to model this function. So it says, for our vocabulary, slope is the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change between two points. Slope, also called the rate of change, slope is a number that describes the steepness of a line in a coordinate plane. So we have two ways of writing it here. We put vertical change, and right behind that you see the word rise, and horizontal change, right. You also see it written as an equation on the second one down, where you actually have variables in there. And they have y sub 2 minus y sub 1. That is just simply subtracting, if we are looking at this, it is simply, simply taking these two coordinates and subtracting them. That is your rise. Now, if you're given a graph, the easiest way to count that is to just count that this went up three. And then it's the change in our y, the horizontal change. And again, what they did was simply take the second, this is my second point, and subtract the first one. So what is that length? Now again, if you're looking at a graph, the easiest way is just count rise over rise. So this video is really short. Um, we're just going to look at a portion of it. So as you are looking at this, Slope is defined as the change in y divided by the change in x. There are multiple formulas for slope, so let's look at them. First, we'll look at rise over run. Rise is how much we move up or down on a graph, and run is how much we move left or right on a graph. In other words, rise is the movement of the y coordinates, and run is the movement of the x coordinates. Now I, now I mentioned slope is the is change in y, y divided, divided by, by the change, change in x. We can, we represent, can represent it like, like this. this. Triangle, triangle y over triangle, triangle x. x. This, this triangle, triangle is delta, delta. and in math, math it just it means change. change. So, so we have we the change, change in y divided, divided by, by the change, change in x. Now for, now for finding the change in y, that means that we're taking the difference between two y coordinates on a line. So, so, on our, our line, line, we'd find, we'd find two, two y coordinates and then and find, find their, their difference. difference. That's, That's the change, the change in, y. in y. Same thing Same with thing the change, change in x. x. We, find, we the find the difference, difference between two x, x coordinates on a line. On a line. So, so, we have we multiple, multiple ways, ways to represent, to represent slope. slope. Slope is equal to the rise over the run, run, the change in y over the change in x, or y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So when we are looking at this, these, one of the things that I will see a lot of times if I'm looking at a graph, I might see rise over run. But we might see an equation. I might see what they talked about there where they said the change. Where you, they use delta y over delta x. But the key thing is, is, that you did these last year also, is that it is always rise over run. So on the next page down in your notes, this should look pretty familiar from last year. Linear functions are functions that have a constant rate of change or slope. It is always the same slope no matter which points you pick. To find the slope of a line from a graph, you can just count the vertical change, that's the easiest way, up to 60. And the thing you've got to be careful for is sometimes our graph has different scales. And then the horizontal change and write it as a fraction. So in this case, they went over, if we were looking at one unit in time, and up 260 for feet. So this is a rate of change of 260 feet per minute. If we are looking at a graph like this one, we would simply count our rise to our run, right? This is a positive slope. We went up one, that's positive, and over one. Here, if we are looking at this one, this one also has a slope of 1, but it is a negative slope of 1 because you went down, that's negative, and as you go to the right, that's your positive. Someone said, well, how do you know that this one's positive? And so um, when you're thinking of going up, we usually think of that as a positive number, and if you think of counting to the right, that's also positive. Positive divided by positive is going to be a positive slope. Sometimes I'll have students say, well, Mrs. Thompson, what if I didn't want to go 
down and I wanted to go up from this point. So if you go up, that's positive, and if you go to the left, that would be negative. So it is still going to be a negative slope, in this case, negative one. Here, if we are looking at our rise to our run and you're looking at your two points and say you pick this point and you pick this other point, our rise, we didn't rise, it's zero. The run is two. Zero divided by two is still going to be zero. So the slope is zero. Zero divided by any number, right, is always going to be zero. So dividing the slope, you're dividing zero by any other number, it will always be zero. Whereas when we look at a vertical line, and this is why this one is not a function, this is a line, it is linear. It is just not a function, right? It doesn't pass the function test. On this vertical line, there are many points, right? So this is a linear, the slope is undefined. And the reason we have the slope is undefined is dividing by zero. If I was gonna count my rise here, and I think of the rise over the run, the rise would be two and the run would be zero. And two divided by zero is undefined. So you cannot divide by zero. Zero can be divided by any number equal zero. Top of the next page. So for each one of these, they are asking you to find the slope. So the easiest way, I believe, is to count. So if we are looking at this, we might put slope, and a lot of times the variable that we use for slope is m, okay? So anytime we're using m, a lot of times we think of that as our slope, or you could write the word. So in this first one, horizontal line, rise is how much? Do, am I going up at all? No. So zero divided by? From negative, if I'm going from negative one to zero, I'm moving over two. Zero divided by two is zero. So if I'm looking at that answer, my slope should be zero. And you don't have to write it out in words. You could have just put m equals zero or slope equals zero. If we look at the next one over here, my slope m is equal to our rise is how much? How far did we go up from, from 0 to 2? We're looking at the change in x, right? So we went up 2, right? But we went <coughs> left and right, 0. So the rise was 2, right? So always thinking rise over run for our slope, okay? And so in this case, we should have on the front. So try these next two. My hint is, as you are looking at those, you might want to write the word rise to run. And I want you to just check with your shoulder partner. Just count how far you went down and over. Or again, you could count up and over and just count your units looking at where those two are. For this first one, what would you use for your rise? Let's do that number. How much? Okay, so we're going to count from this point all the way down to this point. How far are you counting? Six. So we would say our rise, do you want to go positive six or negative six since we were counting down? Negative six. Okay. Helen, if we are counting then since you went down six, how far are we going across then? So we're going from this point at negative one, right? We're gonna to go to zero, we're gonna to go to one, we're gonna go all the way over to two, so we went over over three. So I have negative six over three, but I don't wanna leave my answer that way. Brody, I'm gonna write it top. Uh, negative two. Negative two. Now, sometimes for slope, I'll even leave it as negative two over one, but I would take negative two for a slope. But the confusion that I have students make when they just put negative two, is they think I'm just going down two, down two, down two. Keeping in mind that this is down two over one. And if we look at that pattern, down two over one, down two over one, that pattern does hold all the way. Even though we went down six and over three, that pattern of down two over one. So I prefer a lot of times to leave slope as a ratio 
because that is what we are talking about. It's not just one number, it's a ratio of two, which is the rise to the denominator one. So if we're looking This is Thompson. Now, if you look at your y coordinate, right, the change, three minus a negative one. That's we're gonna start using the formula, but when you're on a graph, you can simply count. One, two, three, four was our rise. We now want to look at our run. So if we are looking at our run, as we look at this one, what do you have, Lucy? Six. How far did you go over? Six. Six. And it's going to be a positive six, right? So we got four over six. We want to simplify this, right? So if we are simplifying this, we want to write that instead of four over six, we want to write it as a simplified fraction. And Caleb, we have what? Um, two thirds. So my rise is two to my run is three, and we want to see if that always holds. Up two over one, two, if we are looking at that three, that does give us this point. Now, I also could have gone, if we are looking at this, if I go one unit over to the right, how far should I go up? If I go over just one unit, I go up how much? No, 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 what's my rate of change? two-thirds. And you can tell, right? It doesn't go all the way up one, right? So that rate of change is simply, as you move one unit to the right, how far, in this case, it went up two-thirds of a unit. If we go over two, it'd be up, we're going to double that, right? We'd be at, if we were looking at that, four-thirds, right? It gets us to this point. All right. So just making sure you're understanding that. So the next part of it is going to say what we want to do is we want to use our slope formula. So your whole homework is going to be in two ways. You're going to see graphs and then you're going to see just ordered pairs. So sometimes using the slope formula is easier than using graphing like in this example. So to plug in the two x values and your two y values into the formula and solve it. So what I am going to have you when you start your homework, you will always start with m equals. You'll put this y sub 2 minus y sub 1. You will always have that on your paper, then you're going to actually substitute in. What do we mean by x1? It's the first x-coordinate, x2 is the second x-coordinate. Someone said, can I switch those around? You can if you make sure whichever x-coordinate goes down here, that the y-coordinate has to match it, right? So this is 4 and 3. Notice I have the 3 and 4. So when I look at my coordinates, I need to make sure that those kind of match up. My y2 was 3. That's my second y. My y1 was negative 1. And the other thing I'm always looking at is these two are above and below each other. That's these two points, 3, 4. Negative 1 and negative 2 have to be. And so when we subtract that 3 minus a negative 1, that actually becomes, when you do subtracting a negative, that actually becomes 3 plus 1. Minus a negative becomes a plus. That's how they got four. Four minus a negative two is the same as adding a positive two to give us a six. Simplify it to two thirds. So we're going to look at these two problems. I want you to start with writing your formula. So, and the, you guys remember doing slope last year? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we're going to start with y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. So, someone said, how do you know which one is which? So above this, the first ordered pair is always x. So this is my x1, this is y1. This is going to be x2, this is going to be y2. So as I go to write these, I want to start substituting in. And as I am substituting those in, Emily, what are we going to use for y2 to be the right side? Negative 1. Okay, look at y2. Three. So most common mistake people want to go with the first thing they see in their two ordered pairs, right? My y2 is 3 and it should be negative, okay? Minus my y1, Owen. What is y1 from how we wrote these? So I need you to go and I need you to not do the homework right now. I need you to do this in your notes. Two was negative three minus what is your y1? Okay, do you see how I have x1 written about this? So 
So why two is two? Be ready to participate, okay? Stay on this page. Do not go back to do your homework at this point. Jack, you want to keep going for us with X2? Um, so it's two plus X2. So two plus two plus five. Two. two. And then we're going to subtract. And if I was looking at this one and I'm looking at my X1, what should I be using, Greta? Two minus, and I sometimes you'll notice that like when it's a negative number, they put minus and then they put the parentheses. You have to have that parentheses? No. If we look at this negative three minus two, that's going to give us negative five. And in our denominator, we have two minus a negative one becomes a plus, and my slope should be <coughs> negative five here. And if you needed to, you could plot these points to check that. Show all of that right now. I'm not sure if you're doing that. Okay. So my slope is negative 5 thirds. So when you do your homework tonight, what I am going to be looking for is that you would start with this. The next step, you're going to show me what you substituted in, and then your answer will be as simple as 1. Keep it as a ratio. Do not worry about changing it to just one number. So we're going to start this next one, m equals. We are starting with. The formula is, everybody, y sub 2 minus y sub one divided by x of two minus x of one. What are you going to use for your y two? I didn't label any of them. What do you want to use for your y two? Two back here. And do you have to write in um, x one and x two and x um, one and do you have to write that down, the x and the y's below it? No, you just need to make sure you notice that any time you have an ordered pair, it is always x, y, not y, x. All right, so my you said we're going to take 2, Laura, minus 0. And Joel, we're going to continue with our x2, which would be? Uh, 3. 3 minus, we have 3 minus negative 2. So again, you don't always have to put that parenthesis there. This is going to be, in my denominator, 5 and 2, and I have a positive 2 fifths. And if you think of graphing those two points, like if we would have graphed that, negative 2, 0 means going over 2, right, here. This one is telling us to go over 3 and up 2. So that makes sense that we count it up 2 and over 5. Rise of 2, right, if we were looking at that, run of 5. Okay. So if I was going from these two points, that kind of makes sense. We don't always want to graph them because sometimes they give us a really hard, long point. Now, this is the part that's a little different than what we've done in the past and when you look at graphing. Last year, you possibly graphed a ton of them in slope-intercept form. So I need everyone on this page. So it says, when you know the slope of the line and at least one point. So we know the slope and we know at least one point that a line goes through. You can easily write the equation. The equation is going to be written, fill it in the blanks below. So we're going to have y equals, it's always going to be the slope. Then you're going to put a parenthesis, you're going to put x, and you're going to give me the x coordinate. So when we are given a coordinate, you're going to know those two points, and then plus the y coordinate. You want to keep the parentheses. So it says sometimes you will see this formula written like this. y equals m, and then I'll have parentheses x minus h plus k. This is still the x coordinate, okay? So this h is still the x coordinate, the k is still the y coordinate. Other times you might see it written exactly like this with the x1 and y1, okay? The key thing is the place where you're going to have letters always is just going to be the y and x. Everything else will be a number. So it says this form has several names, sometimes look different in different math books. It is sometimes called to linear vertex form. Most often you're going to see it called point slope form. Later this year, we're going to be studying other types of functions that are going to be set up almost exactly. We're going to do absolute value functions. They look just like this. We are going to do quadratic functions. They look in that same form. So getting down the form is going to kind of make it easier. So if we are looking at this point, notice the point down here is 3 and negative 2, x and y. And we already knew our slope was negative 1, so that's our given information. So all you are simply going to do is write the equation on the desk is you would be done at this point. You would write y, you put in your slope, that was our m, 
You put x minus, you put the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. You're done. You don't even have to simplify that on the test. If I ask you to write the equation, you would be done at that point for writing the equation. Okay? So it's a matter of getting this form down and taking a look at that. So we are going to be asked to write this, that next part down. Write an equation given the point in the slope. So H is our X or Y? X and Y. And we have a slope of 2 thirds. So first thing we are going to do, Y equals, it is going to be M times X minus X1 plus Y1. That's the general form of my equation. So if we are looking at that one, my slope, if I am looking at that, y equals, what do I want to put in, Kristen? Y equals two thirds. Okay. Then I'm going to put x, and am I going to have minus h, and then y at plus negative four. Done. That's it. That's all you're looking at doing. That equation is written in point slope form. Okay? I would like you right now to try that one right below it. A line that passes through negative 3, 6 with a slope of negative 5. Okay? Try that. So, if you think of just going x minus 3, it is always subtraction here, and then you're putting that coordinate, so it is x minus a negative 3. And then we're going to have plus negative 5. Plus negative yeah. 6. Plus 6. That's my y coordinate. So y coordinate goes back here. X coordinate. So how are we really going to write this answer? We probably don't want minus a negative. So we're going to have negative 5 and we're going to have x plus 3. Could you have done x plus 3 right away? Yes. So if I was asking you to graph it from this equation, someone said, oh, so it's the x coordinate 3. No, it is still the opposite of that. This equation is a line. If you look at this equation with x minus x1, the reason we have that is that's the same as in our slope formula, right? When you look at the slope formula, you're subtracting your two x coordinates in the denominator. So that's kind of where that comes from as we are looking at that. Okay? Yes. Now, if we are looking at this, right? We're looking at the change in y, right? So the change in y divided by the change in x. Well, this first change in x looks to be 20, right? From 10 to 30. From 30 to 70, it's actually 40, right? And then this is another 20. So you've got to choose which two points do you want to use. So if we use our first two points, what is the change in y? That's where you're taking 590, right? And minus 640. And in our denominator, if we put 590 first, I have to take 30 minus 10. So 540 minus, or 590, excuse me, minus 640 gives us? Divide, negative 5 over 2. Now in this case, since we're talking about the balloon, doesn't it make more sense instead of leaving it as negative 5 over 2 to say negative 2.5? And what were we doing? We were doing meters per what? Second. So this hot air balloon is descending at a rate, right, of 2.5 meters per second. So it says write an equation. Which point do you want to pick? You get a choice. A will start us off. Which point do you want to use? Can I have, um, 30 and 9. So 30, and what's the other point with 30? 590. Yeah. Okay. Could someone have picked 10, 640? Could someone else have picked 90, 440? Yes. So my equation is going to be y equals, Evan, our slope was? Our slope was? Our oh, slope oh, was, I know. Our slope is, so we're going y equals m times x minus x1 plus our y1. So f, y equals what? 
is 2.5. We're going to put our parentheses, x minus, hey, you ready to keep going? Yep. And then we should have a plus, how many units? Plus 5 now. So, what if someone used a different number? What if someone wanted to use 10 and 640? Their equation would have been this, y equals negative 2.5. X minus 10 plus 640. So on this one, really, if this was a test question, I have at least five different answers that I would count as correct, right? Mm -hmm. All of these, depending on which one you chose, someone picks 3950, someone picks 10, 640, someone picks 9440, all of those would be the correct equation. Does that make sense to everyone? So when you're looking at the answers in the back of the book, depending on which two points they get, that's where you're going to be taking a look at it. So in this case, what does the slope mean in this problem? Well, you got to go back to the original problem. We can't just say it means down two, down five and over two, right? It's not just if we are looking at this a negative um, 50 divided by 20. We are talking more specific than that. So. What does that slope of negative 2.5 mean? So when we are looking at that answer, we should be looking at slope of negative 2.5 mean the balloon is descending. And that's why we put those labels with it initially. The slope of just negative 2.5 means our balloon is descending 2.5 feet per second. Okay. Meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meters per second. 